Hello, I'm Mick Bates, Regulatory Manager at FE Fund Info. And I'm going to talk briefly about the obligations and mechanics of monitoring the Synthetic Risk and Reward Indicator, or SRRI, on usage kids, particularly given the context of the huge increase in market volatility as a result of the COVID-19 pan pandemic, and how we support fund groups in meeting their regulatory obligations. To start with, let's just recap what the SRRI is. With the advent of usage kids in 2012, all groups could, for the first time, show how risky their funds are in a comparable way, as every usage fund has to calculate its price volatility over the previous five years, rescale it to an annualized number, and then using that annualized volatility, arrive at a risk and reward number between one and seven. This would then be highlighted on the slider as shown here. Most equity funds, since usage kids have been around, have fallen to the SRI levels four or five, i.e. they've had annualized volatility of between 5 and 15 percent. But as we know, most equity markets have for the last decade had a prolonged period of historically low volatility. And since the coronavirus started to have an impact, this complacency has come to an abrupt end. Now, it's very clear that the volatility or SRI level of funds isn't static. And CESA, the EU regulator now known as ESMA, put in place a couple of measures in its instructions on the calculation of the SRI to ensure that the level shown on the usage kid is always accurate, fair, and not misleading, while avoiding the possibility of kids being updated at every sign of a slight change in market or fund volatility. They've required, firstly, that the calculations behind the SRI should be run weekly in the case of daily price funds, and a record kept of each calculation to monitor any changes. Secondly, the current level must be compared each week to the published level. If the published level hasn't appeared at all in the calculations for four months, it's time to update the kid with the level that has appeared most over that time. In the example shown here, taken from the Luxembourg Industry Association Alfie's Q&As in the lead up to the launch of usage kids, the fund has a published SRI of five, but over the four month period, the weekly calculations throw up mostly sixes and a few sevens. So the kid needs to be updated without undue delay to show an SRI of six. If a single instance of a five had appeared at any point in that timeline, the clock would start again and the published kid would be valid for at least the next four months. What does FE Fund Info do in terms of calculating and monitoring the SRI? First of all, we run the calculations, which we had independently accredited at the time, by AKG actuaries and consultants and all calculations in our system are archived and retrievable. We then monitor the output for any instance of the actual volatility being different from the published one. For daily price funds, which make up the vast majority of usage, we run these calculations weekly as required. Because of the huge increase in the number of funds affected by the current volatility, from single figures each week previously, up to hundreds of our clients' funds, we are sending emails after 14 weeks to warn groups prepare for the impending extra work they need to do. And once they reach the four month or 16 week milestone, we'll send them a system alert every day until they publish an updated kid. Based on our clients data, groups will be republishing on average between 30 and 50% of their kids over the next six weeks or so. This level of republication across all fund groups hasn't happened outside the scheduled annual refresh since the start of usage kids. And the irony is that if the market volatility settles down again to the level we've become used to over the last 10 years, before the expected demise of usage kids in the next year, we may end up going through a similar exercise to republish the same kids with a lower SRI score once more. For more information on how we can help you with navigating your regulatory obligations as a fund manager or distributor, please contact us at inquiries at fefundinfo.com. Thank you.